and sisters in Christ, it's good to see each and every one of you again today. We are truly blessed. We are truly honored. We are truly grateful just to be able to be with you again today, to have another opportunity to just to spend time with you and to spend time in God's Word. There's nothing, nothing in this world that brings peace and strength and comfort like God and His Holy Word. In a world that is filled with pain and suffering, in a world that is filled with hatred, in a world that's filled where people's love has grown cold for one another, aren't you so glad that when it feels like the world is falling down around you, that you can still experience the presence of God, that you can still feel His love and know His strength? My friends, tonight, if, if you are blessed enough to know God in a way that even though your day didn't go well, even though your day wasn't great, even though you made mistakes and you went through things and you were challenged with things, my friend, if you still had the ability to feel God's love, to feel God's presence, and to feel that hunger and that desire to continue on as a child of God, my friends, you are blessed. Because we live in a world that is filled with so much hatred. We live in a world that is filled with so much pain and suffering and sorrow. You know, the Word of God talks about, because iniquity doth abound, the love of many has waxed cold. And it's easy to see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how that so many people's love for one another has waxed cold. My friends, in the world that we live in, it seems like and it feels like that people are just waiting, waiting for you to make a mistake, waiting for you to do something or say something that they can just pounce on and just attack and, and try to destroy and try to tear you down and try to beat you up. But I'm so thankful that Brother Frank, that my God, in the midst of all of that, encourages me, loves me, strengthens me, empowers me, encourages me just to get up and keep going. Brother Stewart, in a world when everyone else is screaming and hollering that we should give up, we have failed, we have come short, aren't you glad that God sees so much more. That God sees something inside of you and I, Sister Cindy, that no one else can see. That God sees something inside of us that sometimes that we can't even see ourselves. Maybe you've had a day like I've had. Maybe you've had one of those days where, Mom, that maybe you wish you could have just crawled back into bed and tried it all over again. But Brother Rocky, I'm thankful even on those days when things don't seem to fit, when things just don't seem quite right, that we still have a God who is able to encourage us and strengthen us. And I know that some of you understand what I'm talking about. When, when it feels like that everything you try is met with opposition, and it's met with attacks, and it's met with hatred, and it's met with evil. Brother Ronnie, <clears throat> I, when you're trying your best to give your best, your love, your your support, your, your encouragement, when you're trying your best as a child of God, and you're trying to help others, and you're trying to encourage others, and all they do is attack everything that you're doing. Brother Ronnie, I am so thankful that my strength does not come from the world. But Sister Brenda, I'm thankful that my strength is found in God. Because I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. If we relied upon the world, if we relied upon mankind to be those individuals that gave us our strength, that gave us our support, then, then my friends, so many days, many of us would feel so overwhelmed. We would feel as if we just wanted to give up and quit. Jesus warned us, didn't he? That while we were in this world that we would be hated and persecuted. 
But I'm so glad that, Brother Danny, that while the world fulfills exactly that scripture, while the world is looking to pounce on every weakness that you have, every shortcoming that you have, while the world is doing everything that it can to tear you down and beat you up, I am so thankful that Jesus says, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Aren't you thankful that <clears throat> that God is the one who is there for you? That God is the one who is helping you along the journey? I think the Apostle Paul was the one who said that when I am weakest, I find that he's strongest. Sometimes even along the journey, Sister Crystal, the ones that you think are going to be your greatest cheerleaders, the ones that you think are going to always be in your corner are not always the ones that are there. Sometimes I wonder how much that we have to see that, Sister Cindy, that we cannot get our eyes upon mankind, that we cannot get our heart and our eyes focused upon this world, but we have to remain with our eyes focused upon Him. Sister Angela, that's why so many times that we have to remind people, don't put your eyes on Pastor Perry. Don't put your eyes on the preachers. Don't put your eyes on the pastors. Don't put your eyes on other Christians. But keep your heart and your eyes and your mind focused on God. Because I promise you, He is the only one who will not fail you. He is the one who will not discourage you. He's the one who will not let you down. He is the one who will stick by you. Because the challenge that we have in the life that we are living, my friends, and I want you to hear me tonight. It's amazing that Brother Danny and I was chatting just a little bit. He didn't know what direction that I was going tonight. He didn't realize that I was going to be speaking on some of this tonight. And, and him and I had a private chat, and we got to chat a little bit about some things. But here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Word of God challenges us. It challenges us to be citizens of God or godly citizens in a world that is filled with hatred towards you and I. We are challenged to be Christians, to be the loving people, to be that helping hand, even though people may attack us and tear us up and beat us up. Brother Danny, we are the people who are supposed to show the love and the forgiveness. The Word of God says, if they smote you on one cheek, turn the other. We are to be that loving people, that people in the world today that shows love, that shows forgiveness, that gives grace, that gives his mercy say preacher you're asking a lot my friends I believe that as long as you and I keep our heart in the right place keep our eyes on the right one and keep our mind focused in the right direction that God can help you and I to even love our enemies he tells us in the New Testament that we are to love our enemies in this world, my friend, yes, when you try to testify about your goodness to others, sometimes it's met with rejection. I love what I heard one man said. He said, I, he said, I really didn't understand. He said, Sister Angela, he said, I worked with a gentleman at my work who was just evil and cruel. He said, and he said, and I really felt strong that I needed to go back and talk to that man and share with that man my testimony about Jesus and, and invite him to come to my church. He said, I went back and I did exactly what God wanted me to do, I thought. He said, and all I was faced with was this killer instinct that this man had to try to destroy me, to try to tear me down, try to discourage me, try to beat me up, try to embarrass me, try to shame me in front of all of my co-workers. He said, I walked away defeated. He said, in my heart and my mind, the enemy was telling me I lost the battle. I accomplished nothing. 
He said, that's what I thought. He said, but I didn't know, but for many, many years, I didn't find out what happened that day. He said, Brother Rocky, he said, I didn't realize that, that I thought that God sent me back for this man. He said, but many years later, I ran into this man that I never knew, didn't know his name, didn't know anything about him, but he knew me. He knew who I was. He knew my name, he said. He said he came up with enthusiasm when he saw me and shook my hand and shared his testimony about how that when I came that day to my office, I did not see him because he was behind the desk working on some equipment in the floor and I could not see him. He said, I heard what you were saying to that gentleman and how you were sharing about your Jesus and how you were sharing about your church and how you were showing the love of God. And this man was just beating you up. He said, this man was doing everything he could to destroy you. He said, but what you didn't know, God was working on my heart behind that desk as I listened to you remain that godly man, that you continue to remain that person that God created you to be. He said, in that day I made up my mind. I went home. I told my wife that we were going to church this coming Easter Sunday. He said, that Easter Sunday, you didn't know it, but my wife and I was in your church. We gave our life to the Lord and we've been serving him ever since. My friends, let me tell you something. Even when you think you're not being effective, you do not know who's watching your witness and your journey. We must remain the children of God, my friends, even when we're being attacked by others. Even when it feels like we're not being effective. Even when it feels like we're not accomplishing anything. And boy, let me tell you something, Sister Crystal. There's been many days, I'll be honest with you, you should know by now, Pastor Perry lays it on the line. There's been many days when Sister Angie, I felt like I failed God. There's been many days, Brother Frank, when I felt like I came up short, like I was wasting God's time. I can remember preaching at Crown Free Will Baptist Church years ago. And Brother Danny, I went down there and I preached that. I, I preached my heart out. And Sister Brenda, I left that church that night feeling defeated. I felt like I wasted my time, God's time, and their time. And that same night, Brother Stewart... I got a phone call from a lady out of that church. Said, Preacher, says, everything you were saying, you were speaking it straight to me. And it helped me so much. Brother Ronnie, we have to realize that we don't always see everything that God is doing. God doesn't always show us all of his plan, Brother Frank. But I promise you, if God is laying on your heart to be a steward of God, to be a citizen of God, to walk in his way and walk in his truth and to share his love with others, I promise you, God is accomplishing a work. The word of God itself said that God's word will not go out and come back void. But mom, it says it will accomplish the work that God intended it to accomplish. My friends, we have to remain faithful because you do not know how your witness, how your journey, how your walk, how your love, how your faith, how your walk in God really is impacting others. Here in the book of 1 Timothy Chapter 2, he tells us, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men. 
I've had people tell me that there's people that they that they absolutely will not pray for. My friend, I'm going to tell you something tonight. I'm still praying for the people who've hurt me. I'm still praying for that fellow Christian who's attacked me. I'm still praying for that one who's talked about me behind closed doors. The one who's tried to spiritually murder me. The one who's tried to rub my name in the mud. The one who saw my areas of weakness and attacked them and jumped on them. I'm still praying for those people. Why? Because let me tell you something tonight. I am still called to be a child of God regardless of what we're facing, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what's being done. I'm still called to love you and pray for you and lift you up. And my friends tonight, that's what I'm going to do. I know that there's times when people just want to destroy you. But my friends, I'm going to tell you something. I've mentioned this once before and I'll mention it again here tonight. Let me tell you something. That person that is attacking you, that person that is beating you up, knocking you down, do you know why that that's happening? It's because there's something that's going on that the devil does not want to take place. The devil does not want you to be effective in the ministry work that God is trying to do through you because he's trying to reach not only that person that's attacking you, but other people around you that are watching. And my friend, I'm going to tell you something. As you keep praying for them, as you keep lifting them up, to the Lord as you keep loving on them. Don't do it. Now listen to me church. Don't do it in a way because I know that a lot of people want to say let's love on them and it's as if we heap coals of fire on their head. I know that's what scripture says. But I'm going to tell you something Sister Crystal. I don't keep loving them because I want them to feel the judgment of God. I don't keep loving on them because I want them to be punished. I don't want them to go through torment. But I keep loving on them Brother Stewart. I keep praying for them. I I keep lifting them up. Why? Because I hope and pray that one day that God will reach through the darkness of their heart, that God will pierce all of that hardened heart and get inside of them and begin to touch them and strengthen them, my friends. I'm going to tell you something. They may be your enemy right now. But man, if you can get a hold of the throne of heaven for them, and God can get a hold of their heart. God will change them and save them and set them free. And they will no longer be your enemy, but they will be your brothers and sisters in Christ. See, we're, we sometimes go at this all wrong, don't we? See, if you remember, Scripture said in the book of Ephesians, I believe it is, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Brother Danny, my battle, my fight, my journey is not against any human in this world. My battle's not with the preacher up the street or down the street or online. It's my battle's not with another human being, even though I've been attacked by many. They are still not my enemy, Sister Crystal. My enemy is the one that is trying to steal my soul, that's trying to steal their soul, that's trying to destroy Christianity, that's trying to stop the work of God. That enemy is Satan, my friend. And I'm going to tell you something. When we get a hold of heaven, ain't it amazing? And I hope you've never said this. I'm not trying to pick on you, but I want you to understand the challenge that we have. But it amazes me how many Christians say, I won't pray for them. Why not? Why would you not pray for a sinner that is lost and undone without God? Why would you not want them to receive forgiveness and mercy and grace? Why would you not want them to find the love of God and change their heart and change their life? He says, For kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. Now he says, we are to pray for those who are in authority. Now, I don't know if you're Democrat or Republican. I got news for you. I don't get into all of that garbage. 
But I'll tell you this, I don't agree probably with 99.9% of the government we got right now or the government that we've had before or probably any government we've had in my lifetime. But I do pray for them. No, I don't pray. Listen to me, guys. I don't pray that God blesses their wrongness. I don't pray for God to bless sin. I don't pray for God to bless the wrongdoings. But what I do pray for is that God gets a hold of their hearts and opens their eyes and let them see the truth. Because my friend, if we ever want to see something change, I believe in the power of prayer, don't you? I believe in the power of being a Christian, don't you? Don't you believe in the strength and the peace and the encouragement and all that God can do, my friends? See, I believe that God can take that blackened heart and make it white as snow as according to the word of God. I believe that God can open the blinded eyes. And I'm not talking about just the physical, but I'm talking about the spiritual blindness that has fallen upon this world, my friends. I believe that God can turn a nation around. I believe that God can save a people. I believe that God can send a revival. But my friend, I'm going to tell you something. It takes you and I to get a burden for the lost. It takes you and I to get a burden for this nation. It takes you and I to get a burden for our community, to get a burden for our church, to get a burden for our loved ones. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. You should be ringing the throne of heaven, not because you need things personally. Don't get me wrong. You should give your needs to God, but you should be ringing the throne of heaven, lifting up every individual that you know that needs a healing, that needs deliverance, that needs saved, that needs strengthened, that needs their eyes open, that needs needs a change. You talking about something amazing that would take place. Could you imagine what this world would look like if God would get a hold of the hearts of people that we never thought he could get a hold of and begin to shake them and change them? And I'm not talking about a punishment, church. Sister Cindy, I'm not asking God to strike anyone dead. I'm not asking to call fire out of heaven. I'm not asking for punishment on anybody. But I'm asking for a genuine, heartfelt revival, the opening, the delivering, and people being set free from the chains that have binded them down for so many years. He says, for this, now listen what he says. He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. When we get a genuine, sincere heart to see people saved and set free, when we genuinely want them to experience God and experience Jesus Christ and true revival will come, let me tell you, when people get a hunger for God. You know, the Word of God says in the book of Matthew, I believe it is, around about chapter 5, He said, They which do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. He said, This... If you want to know how to please God, if you want to know what's acceptable to God, if you want to know what's good to God, right here he says it plainly that this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Who desires, what? All men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Word of God says that it's not His will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. See, I think sometimes that we forget about that, church. I think that sometimes that we forget that we, not only should we share the Word of God with people, not only should we warn them when they're doing wrong, but my friend, I want to ask you something. Those people that you are warning are you also praying for those same people? And I'm not talking about a prayer of them to be punished or struck and down, but I'm talking about a genuine heartfelt prayer that they will be changed and saved and set free, that they will be blessed by God. Because see, if all we're doing 
is attacking. If all we're doing is attacking one another, beating up one another, tearing down one another, my friends, we will never experience the genuine revival and the love of God the way that we want. He says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. My friends, I'm going to tell you something. Brother Stewart, I don't know everything. Absolutely I don't. There's a lot of things about God and about God's Word that I don't know. I'll be the first one to admit that. Every now and then, I may say something that doesn't always fit exactly because my brain sometimes gets names mixed up and numbers mixed up and things mixed up. Oh, sometimes I might mix up something a little bit. But I'm going to tell you something. Pastor Perry does everything he can with a genuine heart and a genuine desire to preach the truth of God's Word every time that I preach every time that I teach, every time that I do devotion. Why? Not because I'll be lifted up. Because let me tell you something. It is not Pastor Perry that set you free. The Word of God said it is the truth that will set you free. I want you to hear, to experience, to receive, and to have it grow in your heart the truth. That's what I want. And every now and then, Brother Frank, you may even see this old country boy muck it up sometimes. I told somebody today, every now and then, I can't get a word to come to my head, so every now and then, I may make up a word that sounds like it, you know, and, 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 and make it fit. I know what I mean in my head. It may not come out in the way they understand it. But let me tell you something. I'm not doing it to deceive anyone. I'm not trying to belittle anyone. I'm not trying to convince anyone to give anything to me. My friends, I want people to experience God. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something. There's one thing that this world needs more than anything. And that's Jesus. I need Jesus, you need Jesus, they need Jesus. We need to experience Jesus. And my friends, let me tell you something. Not the Jesus that people have made up in their hearts and minds, but we need to experience the genuine Jesus of the Bible. We need to experience a genuineness. Let me tell you something, my friend. When we experience the Jesus of Scripture and we begin to dig in and allow that word to mold us and shape us and come alive in us, my friends, I'm going to tell you something. You will experience something about God and about God's word maybe that you've never experienced in your lifetime. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a whole lot of stuff out there that is not biblically correct. I want God. More than anything else. I told somebody today, I'm not looking to fight. I'm not looking to argue. I'm too old for that. I've come too far. My heart and my mind, Brother Frank, is not set, it, set up on fighting with anyone. All the childishness, all the silliness, all the playfulness. Sometimes people remind me of middle school kids. All of the all of the issues and the problems and the challenges. Man, they just picking at each other, fighting. And, you know, I can remember sitting in my office, Sister Angela. Them little girls would come in there and they'd sit down and they'd be so mad. Mr. B, I'm so mad at her. She was staring at me and they was talking trash about me. I said, honey, how do you know they were talking about you? They were looking at me. So I know they were talking about me. Do you know the word of God tells us that there comes a point where we're to put aside childish things? Now, don't get me wrong. As a pastor, I'm going to love you. I'm going to listen to every concern that you have. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to encourage you. But I'm going to tell you right now, while I try to help you get past your stuff, 
I'm not going to let childish things attack me in the way to where it pulls me in. Huh? Because I want to just be focused on God. I don't want to miss his blessings. I don't want to miss what he has for me. I don't want to miss the experience of the power of God, the blessings of God, the strength of God, the encouragement of God. And do you know what I've got to do? I, You know, this is what Pastor Perry has to do. I have to stop allowing, Brother Ronnie, all of that childishness, all of that inexperience, all of that stuff that they've got going on. I can't let that impact me and get inside of me. I've got to continue to find Jesus and let him grow in me we need that Pentecostal experience absolutely brother Ronnie we do we need the power of God just falling on our lives just showing up in our church showing up in our communities but my friends it's not going to happen as long as we're fighting over the color of carpets or the kind of lighting or the kind of heat or whatever people fight about these days honey I got news for you it's time that we stop fighting over the material things and we start focusing on the spiritual things of life he said I desire Therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. We just got to praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you, those people who, who come to church with me and they're in church with me in, in live church, not just online church, some of you get to hear me amen every now and then. They get to watch me. I'm not afraid to raise my hands and praise the Lord. I'm not afraid to get loud and praise God. I don't get loud because I want people to think I'm something great. I'm going to tell you something. Do you know what gets me loud? Why I get so loud in church? Because of the passion and what I'm experiencing in God. I'm going to tell you something. When I was growing up, Brother Frank, and I went to a ball game, and man, if I made a home run or I made a touchdown, Brother Phil, man, I'd scream and I'd shout, man, or if my favorite player or my favorite team uh, won the game, Brother Danny, I'd get all excited, wouldn't I? Do you know what? I can't help it. I know that sometimes it bothers people. You know, I've had people attack me and say, Preacher, you preach too loud for me. You get way too loud. I can't help it, my friend. Why? Because I get excited excited about God and about God's word. And I can't, I'll be honest with you, I can't understand why other people don't get excited about God. I really can't. I'm not asking people to run the aisles or whatever, but I'm asking people, man, we ought to have a little bit of joy, a little bit of excitement about serving Jesus. He says, in like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Woo, I could preach a whole message on that. I tell people all the time, do you know, I'm going to tell you something. I'll be honest with you. And I think women are to feel this way about men as well as men feel this way about women. Honey, if they're advertising everything they got, that ain't the woman I want for my wife. That ain't the woman I would want for my girlfriend. Why? Because you know what? She should care enough about herself and he should care enough about himself that, man, that's just for you and them, not anyone else. It's not made to advertise. Woo, I'll leave it alone. I'll keep on going. He said, with property... And moderation, not with braided hair or golden pearls or costly things, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. He said, let a woman learn in silence with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but in silence. He says, for Adam was first born, then Eve. He said, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Let me tell you something, guys. We've got, a, we've got a duty. Men and women have a duty in the kingdom of God, my friends. And our duty is to live a godly life, be good citizens for the Lord, and represent Him in every way humanly possible. You say, well, preacher... Do you do that perfect? Oh, honey, I got news for you. If my wife is in here, she'd amen this. I stick my foot in my mouth pretty often. 
I could almost hear us amen in from the bedroom. I, I sometimes I get in trouble. Uh, if you ask Brother Frank a couple of weeks ago in Bible study, I really was getting le more, less than fish sticks. I was I was rating way below the fish stick list. I got news for you. But let me tell you something. I know, Brother Danny, that my heart is pure and sincere for God. Huh? I know that I don't do everything perfect, say everything perfect. Sometimes, sometimes I get confused in my head and words come out and sentences come out in ways that I really did. We didn't want them to come out that way. Honey, sometimes, Brother Rocky, people pick on me for my accent and, and the words that I use because I'm an old hillbilly boy from Man, West Virginia. And I'm proud of being from Man, West Virginia, just so you know. But sometimes, you know, I get picked on because of the words that I use. Sometimes people don't always understand the words that I say. And, but that's okay because I'm going to tell you something. If you could just feel what's going on in the side of Pastor Perry's heart, if you could just feel what's going on in the side of my mind, if you could just feel the experience that I have and the power and the presence of God, you would know that, honey, I've got news for you that I have my heart and my mind focused on God and nothing else. I want to go to heaven more than anything else. I don't care about worldly possessions. I don't care about other things. Do I have those things? Absolutely. People have to live. I got a home, I got cars, I got food, I got money. Yes, but none of that stuff matters to me. Brother Frank, if all of that's gone tomorrow, as long as I've got Jesus, I'm still on my way. Why? Because, Brother Danny, there's been many times, over 80% of my life, and my mother's on here, she'll tell you whether if this is the truth or not, over 80% of my life, I've been broke and poor and destitute, didn't know where the next meal was coming from, but honey, I'm going to tell you, the same Jesus that I serve right now was the same Jesus when I was down there and I was broken and didn't have a, 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 a dime or a nickel to rub between each other. Let me tell you something. God is the most important thing to me, serving him. You know how come that I'm able, one of my friends asked me, said, I don't understand how you got all this energy to be able to go in and, and, and work all day and preach and teach and Bible study and in men's ministry, and then get on there and have all of that energy and that excitement for devotion. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you how. Because of my love and my desire and my hunger for God, I felt like almost two years ago now, come this October, we'll make two years exactly, but I felt like almost two years ago, Brother Danny, I felt God putting a burning desire in my heart to get online and do devotions. And I'm going to tell you something. There's days when I'm tired. There's days when I don't feel good. There's days when I'd like to crawl in bed, but honey, I want to please God, and I believe until God tells me different, Brother Ronnie, that I have to keep doing what God called me to do. He says in our devotion, said the Bible teaches that Christians should be godly living people in this world. We should be loyal. We should be devoted. We should be dedicated. We should work with one another in unity, lifting one another up, encouraging one another, seeking the will of God, seeking the things of God, seeking to worship God with all of our heart. My friend, we don't have it all figured out. Nobody has it all figured out. I get so tickled at people when they when when they think that they've got it all figured out when there's a whole lot of things they're saying and doing that's wrong as well. But mom, what we need to do is just be genuine. Be sincere. Have a genuine, honest hunger and desire for God. That's what we got to have, my friends. I want to please him. But at the same time, there's days just like today, there was a few things that went on that, man, Mom, I would have loved to just crawl back in bed and try to do it again. There's things that people say and do that every now and then, that, that Brother Ronnie, that just really hits you deep down inside. Do you know what? The scripture says, and this is what keeps me going. He said, everything that we do, we should do as if we're doing it unto the Lord. 
I know God is pleased with me. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. If you knew my journey, if you knew all the things that went on through my life and where I was and where I am, you would know that as well. I'm going to tell you something. The doors that, that God has opened, Pastor Perry didn't open them. God opened those doors. And I'm going to tell you something tonight, friends. When you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is pleased with you, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. It doesn't matter what they create, what they make up, what they do. Do you know who it's up to whether you're blessed or not? God. Do you know who it's up to whether you're saved or not? God. Do you know who it's up to whether if you're entering into the kingdom of heaven or not? God. My friend, just keep serving him. But be genuine Christians. Because you never know who is watching you. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you tonight, I'm thankful, Father God. And Lord, I'm humbled at the fact that, Father God, that you just allowed me to be a part of the service. Father God, that you allowed me to be a part of your love and your truth. That you allowed me, Father God, just to be a part of the kingdom work, Father God. I don't know what the rest of the world wants to do. I don't know why they get so upset, why they get so bent out of shape. But, Father God, help me to stay focused on you. Help me to remain faithful. Help me to stay honest and pure. Help me, Father God, to be genuine. Help me, Father God, to continue to have a passion and fire and desire. Help me, Father God, to keep my focus on you. And Father God, help me just to continue to do things, not for the world, but because I want to be pleasing to you, Father God. Help me to always do everything as if I'm doing it unto you, so that, Father God, I know that you are pleased with me. While the world may be disappointed, I know that, Father God, that you continue to love me strengthen me, encourage me, and make a way. Father God, I just pray tonight if there's someone who's listening in, I know, Father God, that this just wasn't for me. But I know, Father God, that you were speaking to some people tonight. And I just pray, Father God, that right now, I know that there's brothers and sisters in Christ who are listening. Many of them who felt like that everything they're doing, that people just attack all of their good and turn it bad. I just pray, Father God, that you will encourage them. I pray, Father God, that you would just help them to see, Father God. Lord, if there is a shortcomings in my life or their life, that, Father God, that we need to change. Father God, help us to see it so we can be more like you, so we can draw closer to you. But, Father God, let us not let the world and the things the world does and the things the world says discourage us, belittle us, or still our joy or our victory. But Father God, I just pray right now for that one individual that may be challenged right now, that may be struggling. I just pray, Father God, that you will reach down right where they're at right now. Let them feel you wrapping your loving arms around them, Father God, and let them feel your strength. Let them feel your encouragement. Let them hear your voice saying, Get up, keep going, I'm with you. Father God, tonight, if there's even one that don't know you as Lord and Savior, Father God, I pray that whatever's hindering them from coming to you right now, that you remove that, Father God, that you break the chains that bind them down, that you open their eyes to the truth, that you let your light shine into their darkness, Father God, that they might receive tonight and be saved. Father God, we ask all of this so that you'll be honored and glorified, but also that people might be saved and set free and delivered and find you as their great Savior. Father God, let your will be done, your power be known, and your presence be felt. Speak your word, Father God, even now in Jesus' mighty name, and amen. I thank you tonight for being with me always. I thank you for praying for me. Please, 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 please continue to lift up Pastor Perry in your prayers. Let me tell you, the past few months has just been a roller coaster ride. I'm going to tell you. 
but continue to pray for us. Please make sure that you share tonight's message. I know that there are people out there that need to hear this message, and not because I not because I was the one that spoke it, because I know people need to connect with God. So please make sure you click the share button, share tonight's message. Make sure that you invite family and friends and neighbors to listen and share as well. My friends, thank you for being with me. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night, Friday night, to come back at 9 o'clock for Winding Down with Pastor Perry. I pray that wherever you go, that God goes with you, blesses you, strengthens you, protects you, and supplies all your needs. I pray tonight that God will watch over you and help you along your journey. But most of all, my friends, I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.